Royal Rumble is always special. It carries a certain level of excitement directly associated with it because it is always thought of as the official kickoff to the road to WrestleMania. And what I saw last night from WWE did a lot to kill my excitement for WrestleMania. How in the fuck do you have a format show that goes four damn hours? One, how the hell is that even possible? How do you manage your timely timing so poorly? Two, is it that hard to put on a better show? This show largely sucked. It was boring, felt pretty predictable, and there was nothing that really hooked you or nothing that really sat there. Well, I can't say that. There were a couple of small nuggets there, right? But they weren't incredible or anything like that. This was a bad event. It really was. About the biggest highlight for me is I've been tweeting for the past week or two talking about you know, this is WrestleMania 40 coming up, and in Roman numerals, that's XL. And you want to make this the biggest and baddest show you possibly can. You want to make it stand out from above the rest. You sit there, and you fucking put WrestleMania XL. And now you just got to add the bigger, longer, and uncut time <laughs> tagline. But I saw that logo, that WrestleMania XL logo with the Liberty Bell. That shit looks slick as hell, I can't lie. I don't know why Triple H and the commentators were afraid to say it during the show. Just say it already, damn it! WrestleMania XL! It's bigger and better than ever! You're welcome! But obviously, before we even get to talking about this show, that kind of to me stunk, and maybe this is a reflection of all the drama that's been surrounding WWE the past couple of days, you had the news drop of the allegations against Vic McMahon from a former employee and specifically the very graphic details of that. And Vince McMahon resigns his spot with TKO with WWE. And it's just, yeah, now you understand after seeing some of those details of the allegations, you understand why the hell Vince McMahon was in such a hurry to come back from his last sabbatical and hurry up and force the sell, sale of the damn company because he knew some greasy, grimy, grummy, sh grubby shit was coming down the pike. Also, let's stop being naive about it. The, the highest level executives within WWE, the highest level executives within Endeavor, they knew about this shit before it went public. Don't you fucking kid yourself. Sitting there and pretending like it didn't is just living in a land of make-believe. Now, naturally, you know, people raged about this and talked about how evil Vince McMahon was and all of that. And the reality is, it's one thing to tweet that. It's one thing to even do videos about that. But the sick reality of it all is wrestling fans don't care. They don't. And I even tweeted this Saturday afternoon. You know, like... They should, and they pretend like they do, but you don't. So tell me who you got winning the Royal Rumble. And the reality is they don't. Wrestling fans just don't care. It is whatever. Let's just be eyes wide open about it. Wrestling fans do not care about this stuff. They want the wrestlings. So I'll do a separate video talking about the Vince McMahon saga and instead focus on what we got last night with the Royal Rumble. I wish I didn't have to. Starting off with the women's Royal Rumble match. You know, sometimes when you force equality, it doesn't work. And what I mean by this is having a women's Rumble match, fine. I'm cool with that. Having it be 30 women when it requires you to bring up a number of people from NXT that most of your audience has no damn clue about. And it really hurt the match, frankly, when so many of these wrestler, lady wrestlers from NXT were coming out and they got no reaction whatsoever because either nobody knew about them or nobody gave a fuck. And then you're having to sit there and bring in multiple people from another promotion like, yay, it was great to see Naomi, don't get me wrong. It was kind of surreal and cool to hear them reference TNA 
And then you said you brought in Jordan Grace, and initially, it's like when the music hit, I said, who the fuck is that guy? Um, but if you got to go to all those lengths to try and fill 30 slots, maybe you don't need the 30 slots. 20 would have been sufficient here. It's a rumble match for the ladies, fine. But if this is what your women's roster is going to look like, and this is how not emotionally invested the fans are in them, then you no longer need this to be 30, 30 women, period, full stop. Is this match was a long, dragging out bore for the most part. There were a couple of highlights, but there wasn't much, right? Like I said, it was kind of cool to see Naomi. Although I thought, you know, and the commentators were interesting throughout the night because there's this weird combination of like, they're happy to be there, but they really don't know what the fuck's going on. Like when Naomi's music hits, she comes out number two and it's like 45 seconds of silence. And oh, it's Naomi. Yeah, you think? <laughs> Uh, but this match felt long, felt dragged out. It was sloppy. It was botchy and just didn't really work. I will call out what I think were the key highlights here. Chelsea Green. She took advantage of her spot in her moment. By God, did she make the most of it. She was entertaining as shit. Nia Jax comes in and she changed the trajectory of the match and how they booked her and presented her here. Like they made her feel like a big deal. And this match needed that at that point. Our truth coming out and trying to join the Women's Royal Rumble, fucking hilarious. I can't wait to see him get his singles match against Tom and Nick Mysterio at WrestleMania. But obviously the big, the big star was Jade Cargill making her main roster debut. My God, she looked gorgeous. My God, did she feel and look like a big fucking star. The crowd was into it. They were excited. And then they have her come out and very quickly dispatch of Nia Jax. And it's like, that's how you do big bad boss bit shit right there. And then they have her, she's sitting there and she's laying on the ground and selling. And it's like, no, don't do that. Like it made sense. They built up Nia Jax as you're wondering like, are you going to have Jade Cargill come in and clean house? Well, they had her get rid of Nia and do a little bit more damage, but then she got eventually eliminated in the final three. But the only thing that mattered was that stare down between her and Bianca Belair with the WrestleMania sign in the background. WWE, you got your confirmation. Fans have been talking about wanting this for a while. You could hear it from that Tampa St. Pete crowd. They clearly want this. So give us what we want at WrestleMania. And that doesn't have to be for the title. You could feel the big bad boss bitch energy between those two. It was fantastic. I don't know if I wanted them to fucking beat each other's ass or fucking have sex right there in the middle of the ring. Both would have been equally acceptable. I will call out. Um, so Bailey winning, like this felt pretty predictable based off of what everybody was saying beforehand. You know, it was... One of those things, if the crowd was really into it, I was kind of like, oh, okay, I guess, right? Um, that was the worst thing they could do, but if it was going to be this predictable for the women's, hopefully the men's will be a little less predictable. <laughs> um, but the fans were really into Bailey winning, and at least they have a natural story for where they can take Bailey over the next couple of months. Um, but yeah, that match wasn't good. I can't believe I saw people online talking about this was the best women's rumble match they've seen. What fucking planet are you on? This was the best? This felt like one of the two worst that I've seen. It was a really bad. Just really bad. Um, next up, though, you had the Fatal 4-Way, which everybody knew how the hell this one was finishing. At least LA Knight didn't eat the pinfall here. Um, and at least they didn't get too overblown in terms of the interference. You had... Some interference from Solo about midway through the match where he sits there and hits the Samoan Spike and LA Knight and Randy Orton, but then when he tries to run through AJ Styles' ringside, he goes through the barricade. Um, but this match was never going to finish any other way but Roman Reigns retaining. And yeah, I kind of get it from people in terms of, you know, this is why they booked the Fatal 4-Way, so that way you could have the interference make sense. It wouldn't be against the rules but you feel like you keep saying the same finish. And as much as I'm a fan of the tribal chief, the head of the table, the bloodline and everything, yeah, at some point in time, it does get a little repetitive. I fully acknowledge that. 
You know, this was an example or a situation where you didn't have to go there. You could have either A, not done a fatal four-way, or B, if you do the fatal four-way, have Roman Reigns win in a different method that is technically clean. Fans would have been more surprised. It would have worked better than what you got here. This just felt like the same old shit. Like, did anybody really think that this belt was ever at risk here? I'm just saying. Uh, next up, Logan Paul defends against Kevin Owens for the U.S. Championship. And this match was cool. The finish I thought was great. Kevin Owens hitting him with the brass knucks after Logan Paul tries to get the brass knucks used on Kevin Owens. And then the ref counting one, two, and before he hits three, sees the brass knucks on Kevin Owens and Logan Paul retained by disqualification. Like, yeah, that was good. And if that means we're going to see these two face off again at WrestleMania, then sign me up for that. That's fine. But, you know, this match really didn't move me either. It was probably the best actual match on the show, in my opinion. It certainly wasn't either of the two Rumble matches. And it wasn't the Fatal 4-Way. Not at all. And then we get to the main event. It was cool to see Braun Breaker make his main roster debut and basically take the Brock Lesnar spot. But if you were going to put him here, then he needs to go into the final four. I'm just saying. He needed to go into the final four. Mix it up a little bit. You know, like, as I think about this, you got no hope spot from Kofi Kingston. You, know, you really didn't get much in the way of surprise returns that mattered. You know, Dominic Mysterio, the heat he gets is incredible. It was a highlight to see our truth there. But when he gets all down to it, your last few are Cody Rhodes, Gunther, and CM Punk. Basically, a rehash of last year just adds CM Punk into the mix awkwardly. Now, I will say this. After watching his performance in the Royal Rumble... You know, I'm incredibly hesitant to say that CM Punk should be in a featured main event spot at WrestleMania. He looked like dog shit. And you want to talk about finishing the story, the far more interesting and compelling story would be, hey, 10 years to the date since the last time he wrestled in a WWE ring on television or premium live event was Royal Rumble 2014. Here's Royal Rumble 2024. Here's CM Punk looking to win the Rumble and come back to WWE and win the championship in main event WrestleMania. Like, more layers of interesting, compelling, finish the story shit there than what we get from the overforced Cody Cena crap, but I digress. But, if he's going to continue to look like this, he looked even worse than he did in AEW. He looked like he had taken 10 years off and hadn't been in the ring one time. Then I could understand the reticence around putting the Royal Rumble win on him. But as I'm sitting there and watching this Rumble match, I'm sitting there thinking, you want to talk about finishing a story? I'm much more interested in the story between Gunther and Cody for the IC title at Mania. Real talk. Because I feel like this actually has just as much story behind it. These two lasted, you know, were in the Royal Rumble last year. They were the last two. Gunther lasted forever. Cody Rhodes, of course, got the easy way out. Didn't have to do shit and he won. This time... They made Cody go a little longer here, but it was Cody Rhodes was inevitable against Gunther. Gunther gets eliminated, and it's down to CM Punk and Cody Rhodes. And I'm sitting there at first. I'm like, oh, thank God, maybe Punk will win, even though he looks like shit. And as I kept going and going, I said, oh, God, they're going to have Cody win this shit. And when it got to the point where Punk was saying, I'm not going to lose to Dusty, kid, I said, ah, fuck, I already know where this is going. And lo and behold, wouldn't you know, history repeats itself. Cody Rhodes is your 2024 Men's Royal Rumble winner. And of course, immediately diving in post-match to sit there and call out point to the WrestleMania sign and then point to Roman Reigns, he wants to finish his goddamn lame-ass story at WrestleMania. There's so many things I could say about this right now. But what a predictable wet fart. And frankly, 
You wasted last year's Rumble and arguably this year's Rumble. Like, if you're going to do all this shit, you should have just had Roman lose to Cody at WrestleMania last year. Honestly. Like, because any outcome that arises from this to me is not going to be good. You could have Damian Priest cash in at WrestleMania. You could have him try to cash in and be unsuccessful and have Roman pin him to retain or have Cody pin him to win the title. You could have a whole bunch of Uso interference. You could have The Rock interfere. You could have this become a triple threat. You could have Cody win clean. You could have Roman win with help. Like, none of these outcomes are appealing. And then the whole notion of finish the story for Cody Rhodes, okay, and then where the fuck do you go? Like, you finished the story. Okay, your story's done. That's it. There's nothing else. That's what's so stupid about the whole framing of this. Finish your story. Okay, and then what? And it's going to be just like it is sometimes for a baby face. Is the pursuit is much better than the actual reality. But fine, if you're going to fucking do it, just get this done and get this over with. Because this shit now is getting forced. It's getting to levels of ridiculous all around. I mean, even Cena didn't win back-to-back rumbles. Just saying. But Cody Rose certainly isn't beating the John Cena applications at all with this. And you expect me to get all giggly tits and excited about a rematch between Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania? It's WrestleMania 40, WrestleMania XL, a marquee WrestleMania, a milestone WrestleMania. And the main event you've got planned for us is a rehash of the same one from last year? No fucking thanks. I'm good. Just get this shit over with.